In 96, my brother died in a plane crash. Everyone flew into Tennessee for the funeral. While the rest of us were grieving, Dad was somewhere else. Even after we left, for about a year, he was distant, distracted, consumed with the details of the crash and trying to understand why it happened. It's the engineer in him, Mom advised. Be patient. As usual, she was right. He was a human process engineer. When I was younger, he would jot down the models he used at work, bring them home on scraps of paper to try out on us at the dinner table. When Mom got cancer, we thought we'd lose him again. Caring for her was Dad's sole concern. They came out to Colorado, where I worked, for treatment. I watched him get up early to take her to every appointment and listened to him tell her to take which pill and when. After each round of chemo, he would pace and fret in our living room through her fits of nausea. I'd be in the other room thinking about the 43 years they'd been together, how they finished each other's sentences, held hands when they walked, how they still kissed like prom dates. They went home after a few months, and after about a year, she died. I called frequently. Each time I hung up, I pictured him alone in that big house, a house my mother had decorated and filled with photographs of children and grandchildren who perched on every shelf and table. Artwork from family and friends covered the walls. A frayed yellow strip of paper recording the height of three growing children was still taped to a kitchen cabinet. It was a house that waited expectantly for reunions that would never happen. When we went home for Christmas that year, the house looked just as Mom had left it. In addition to some new pictures of Mom, there was a small square of paper taped to the door going to the garage. On it were six letters arranged in a triangle. Over the next few days, I noticed identical squares on Dad's bathroom mirror, the dash of his car, beside the phone, and on the back of the front door where he greeted guests. He wasn't sleeping. I could hear him moving through the house during the night. But in the daylight, there he was, lively, engaged, not a hint of struggle. He drew out the details of our lives. He played happily with my young son. He regaled us with stories of friends and relatives he'd reconnected with. He spoke easily of mom and my brother without a hint of self-pity or depression. He embraced us and the large circle of friends around him with great warmth and intensity and humor. At the end of our stay, as he was driving us to the airport, I noticed the paper square again. What is that, I asked. That, Dad said, is my formula for living these days. Listen. Don't talk. Ask about them. He looked at me with a half grin and shook his head. I just seem to need a lot of reminders.